Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. Um, you're here today with The Coding Coach. I've taken about three weeks off. I've been creating study guides, um, more material, um, just a lot of things, more videos, a lot of helpful uh, tips and things um, as you uh, take your coding journey. So I'm here working this morning. I'm not sure if you know, but I am an HCC coder and HCC is risk adjustment or hierarchy condition categories. And I was coding a live chart and I thought, well, maybe let me go ahead and record it and let me um, show you guys a few things as far as HCC coding as I coded a live chart. So of course I won't divulge any confidential information, doctor's office names, date, uh, date of birth, anything to violate any HIPAA regulations or things like that. So let's get into it. Um, don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful. Um, don't forget to comment. Let me know what more uh, subjects or categories of videos you would like to see from me in this page. And also, most important to, uh, and most importantly, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Um, notification bell as well. So as soon as I upload videos, you'll be the first to know. So you might hear a little noise. I have a, uh, a heater going. It's cold here in Atlanta. Uh, so I have a uh, space heater under my desk um, that's going. So you might hear the noise. I hope you can still hear the audio real good. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, so most medical charts, um, you're gonna have your uh, your past medical history, your family history, your social history, um, things like that. Your medication history is also important. And when you're HCC coding, your medical history is important because if you have a condition that um, you're not sure if it's active or not, if you look at the medication list, it'll let you know if the condition is uh, presently being treated. And if it's presently being treated, then you do want to capture um, that code. So let's start off. This patient here is coming in today for a follow-up. Okay, so um, the chief complaint is follow-up visit. So, of course, you have different categories, chief complaint, uh, your HPI, HPI, things like that. So the chief complaint is a follow-up visit. Um, the uh, history of the present illness, that's what the HPI stands for. Patient came in today for a follow-up, came in today for a clearance for a gastric surgery, currently stable. So this let me know what's presently going on with this patient. So the patient's problem, um, they have a vitamin D deficiency, unspecified. I'm not going to capture that um, because it's not a, a HCC code. It doesn't have a risk adjustment score. Now remember with HCC coding, we're only going to capture chronic conditions and conditions and diseases that have a risk adjustment score. So chronic kidney disease stage two, that has a score that's gonna be N18.2. A lot of these codes I knock the top of my head because I use them a lot. And with HCC coding, it's pretty much repetitive. Everybody either has the same conditions or I've coded the condition before. So it's kind of stuck here mentally as the code I'm gonna use. So this patient also has hypothyroidism. I already know that's going to be E03.9. I've already coded it here. Okay, then this person also has sedative hypnotic or uh, hypnotic dependency, uh, and it's uncomplicated. So this is going to be F1320. Let me make sure because I do not want to code the wrong thing. Okay. I think this is the sedative code. Okay. Yeah, sedative hypnotic dependency. Okay. So that's going to be F1320. And then this patient also have uh, other cardio uh, myopathies. That's going to be I48.2. I always use that code as well. Okay. And then this patient uh, is, uh, has hypertensive heart and chronic kidney disease with heart failure in stage one through stage four chronic kidney disease or unspecified chronic kidney disease. So we already see here that they have stage two. So when you have um, hypertension and then you also have chronic kidney disease, you can use a combination code. So we already know that hypertension is I-10. We already know that CKD or chronic kidney uh, disease unspecified is N18.9. So instead of me coding those separately, then if the if the physician says that they are, are interactive 
which means the hypertension that this patient has is affecting the chronic kidney disease, then we're going to use a combination code. So with this code, which is high, with this um, diagnosis of hypertension, excuse me, hypertensive heart and CKD with heart failure stage one through four, uh, CKD, then that code is going to be I13.0. You remember we have the I10, which is the hypertension, and we would have the N18.2 for the kidney um, chronic disease. So we just intertwine them. And we also going to keep the stage because we have to specify the stage. What we won't do is we won't call the I10. We won't call regular hypertension because it's already included in this hypertensive heart and CKD. So this patient also has non rheumatic valve insufficiency that's i34.0 it doesn't have a RAF score it's not an hcc code okay then they have um atherosclerosis of the eight order that is an icd-10 code and that's going to be i70.0 okay they have chronic dystolic congestive heart failure now this is another thing about being specific you know how when you hear uh coding um instructors or uh when you're reading things that say always code to the highest specificity here's a prime example of the highest specificity you see how they are detailing this physician and this chart is detailing that this patient has chronic dystolic um congestive heart failure they could have just put heart failure and if they would have put heart failure then it would not have been specified and I would have had to use I50.9 because it's heart failure unspecified. But they say that it's chronic dystolic and it's congestive heart failure. So I use code I50.32. And it also gives you more money too as far as on the physician side of collecting more money uh, for their patients. Also capturing, capturing excuse me, a um, true picture of what's wrong with this patient. So instead of the doctor just saying, oh, this patient has heart failure, okay, they say this patient has chronic dystolic congestive heart failure. So they're being specific. And then when they see another doctor, uh, the doctor can kind of pull the chart and know what kind of uh, conditions that this patient has. This patient also has major depressive disorder. It's recurrent and it's mild. So it's going to be F33.0. They are morbidly obese. Okay, so this is going to be E6601. Also, when you're coding HCC charts, pay attention to the BMI. Look at the vital signs. You know how they have the weight, the height, the blood pressure, the things like that. Always look for the BMI. If the BMI is 40 and above, you're always going to capture that. That's the HCC code. Now, the doctor may not always write um patient is morbidly obese or things like that sometimes they might omit it because doctors aren't perfect in documentation that's why we have uh coding certifications now to assist doctors with how to properly document so we can code what's actually there so if it's not documented that the patient is obese but you see in their vitals that they have a bmi of 40 or above go ahead and capture that and the bmi uh, excuse me in the icd-10 code for that is going to be Z as in zebra, 68.41. So also this patient has um, disorders of the lung. That's, that's J98.4, I think. I don't think that's the HCC code. Let's see. Okay, and it's not. Okay, then I have um, none thrombocyto, excuse me, thrombocytopenic. Uh, disease and that's going to be also a HCC code that's going to be D69.2 and that's non-thrombocytopenic disease other non cytro excuse me cytopenic so excuse me do you know how they do the little messages to make sure you're um your TV is working. I mean, excuse me, the uh, messages, the emergency messages is working. That's what's going on here. So for the past medical history for this patient, they have thyroid disease, kidney problems, heart problems, depression, uh, other cardiomyopathies, uh, disorder of the lung, high blood pressure, 
atrial uh, fibrillation. So I didn't get a chance to capture that because I didn't read it in the problems. So I'll go ahead and code that here because I know that is a chronic condition. So let me see anything else on the past medical history. So thyroid disease, that's going to be E07.9. Now remember they had hypothyroidism too, which is E03.9, but they also had thyroid disease, which is unspecified disease of the thyroid, not just hypothyroidism. So I'm going to go ahead and code the E07.9 as well. So I don't see any more codes to capture. So it tells me their surgical history as well. They had a um, lumpectomy to the breast. They must have had breast cancer. They had a hysterectomy before. They used to smoke, so it says former smoker. So their family history, they have a family history of strokes. Here are the medications that they're taking. I can tell they're taking thyroid medications. I know that's an active problem. They're taking medications for vitamin D. Remember, we mentioned that, but we're not going to code it because it's not an HCC code. But I can tell by the medications what's actively going on with this patient because it's actively being treated. So they reviewed the systems. This doctor reviewed the cardio, excuse me, the cardiovascular system, respiratory system. Okay, bingo. Da -da -da -da. I didn't know that this code was going to have what um, I was looking for earlier. Excuse me, this chart was going to have what I was uh, mentioning earlier as far as some tips I was giving you because I'm live coding now. So I just started recording as I started working. Um, so this patient weighs 208 pounds and they have a BMI of 40.6. So being that they have a BMI of 40, I am going to capture the code Z68. 0.41 to show that this patient has a BMI of 40. So the diagnosis that they're walking away with um, from this encounter, see, E6601, okay, got my morbid obesity. Okay, so what the, uh, the doctor is diagnosing them with today is going to be hypertensive heart with CKD, and remember I said this I13.0. Uh, this CKD stages 1 through 4, and this patient has stage 2.